Hey everyone, I'm John Sisson and today we're doing a quick first look of Sony's newest G Master lens, the 35mm f1.4. Now first of all, I just want to give a quick shout out to Sony Australia for letting me use this lens. It is on loan at the moment, so I only have a limited amount of time. But if you didn't already know, Sony already have a 35mm f1.4 in their lens lineup, but that's in the form of the Zeiss lens. Now, interesting thing about this, or about that lens, is that it is made by Sony, but made to Zeiss specifications. With this one, the new G Master lens is made to Sony's own specifications, but with that being said, it's offering the best that Sony has to offer in terms of optics and glass, and of course, offering the best when it comes to hardware and features. Now in this video, I'm going to give you a quick tour around the lens, I'm going to give you a quick comparison with the Zeiss, and of course, show you some photos I've taken with it, and a bit of its performance. Now, at the end of the video, I'll also let you know why I personally think of it with my first impressions, and hopefully that will give you some insight to what this lens has to offer. All right, so here is the 35mm f1.4 GM. As you can see, it's clearly stated there. And you can also see an aperture ring which goes from f1.4 all the way to f16. A essentially means that you can control the aperture through the body of the camera itself if you do not prefer to use this. Going this way, you do have a focus hold button which is set by default, but you can change this to other features via the camera's menu system. Over here is a focus switch from autofocus to manual focus. And on this side, you can change the option to have the aperture click like this or you can have it silent and it will be a smooth turn. Very useful for video if you intend to use it for that purpose. Now taking a look at the front of the lens, you can see it is a 67 millimeter filter thread and it does focus as close as 27 centimeters. Now for comparison's sake with the Zeiss 35 mil f1.4, you do have the minimum focusing distance of 30 centimeters, I believe. Yes, you do. Now, it is a rubber focus ring, whereas this one is more of a, it's not so much rubber, but just a different material from the focus ring itself. Very similar to, I guess, say the 24mm f1.4 GM from Sony. So if you had a play with that lens, it is very similar in terms of the design and I suppose the size as well. Now, taking off the rear cap here, you do have a rubber gasket which is going to be great to protect the lens from any dust and moisture from getting in. But not only that, you do have uh, a moist, uh, I guess a weather resistant design around the body of the lens itself, which is good. And you do get AC applied plastic barrel type lens hood, which so pretty much fits on very snugly, not really any wobble, which is good. And it is, doesn't add too much size to the lens itself, which is great. Now, one thing I quickly wanted to do was just compare it to the Zeiss 35mm f1.4. Now, as you can see, it is a bit taller and it is a bit heavier as well, but very similar in terms of having an aperture ring and a D-click option compared to the Sony GM lens. Now, as you can see here, it is a 72 millimeter filter thread, which is a bit larger and it's going to be a bit more expensive if you intend to get filters for this lens. The 67 millimeter filter thread seems to be a more popular size for, I guess, filters these days, which is great. It's not too small, not too large either. So that's definitely a good option to go with. This lens could be great for a varied amount of applications from street photography, portraiture and events, and anything low light. Now, if you're planning to use this lens on an APS-C camera, then the effective focal length will turn it into a 52.5 millimeter lens, which could make for a decent portrait lens. Now, as expected, there is no stabilization built into it. So if you're shooting at slower shutter speeds, expect to rely on the stabilization of your camera body, but that's just if your camera actually has it. The Sony 35mm f1.4 looks to focus quickly and works well with IAF. Now from what I've seen so far, it's been quite accurate with what I wanted to take photos of, but it did hunt a bit when it came to low light situations. 
from taking a quick look at the photos, these images look absolutely amazing. Now, to be honest, this is very much what I expected. The photos look sharp from corner to corner, and that is wide open at f1.4. Now, during my time using it, I haven't seen any chromatic aberration or vignetting either, which is a big plus. And of course, I have to mention the bokeh looks buttery smooth as well. The colors look punchy with a fair amount of contrast, but I will need to play with this lens a bit more to see it in different settings, but it certainly looks promising. Now, I haven't shot too much video with it, but I will say there is a fair amount of focus breathing, which can be a bit distracting if you plan to use it for video. When it came to tracking my subjects, it was quick and smooth without any jittery movements when it came to focusing from something close up to something further out. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that first look at the Sony 35mm f1.4 G Master lens. What are your thoughts on it? I personally like it, to be honest. I, it's hard to dislike a lot of the G Master lenses. Sony just do so many things right, in my opinion, when it comes to down to these type of lenses. It is approximately 100 grams lighter than the Zeiss version, which is great. And for me, the most important is when it comes down to picking lenses and camera gear is of course not only the focal length but usually the size of the lens is a big factor into whether I actually buy it or even if I do buy it if, whether I actually use it a lot or not. With that being said I think a lot of people would have wanted maybe something like an f1.2 just to match Sigma's 35mm f1.2 monster lens or just a bit of differentiation with the 35mm focal lengths that Sony has on offer. So at the moment, they've actually got four. So you've got the 35 f2.8, the 35 1.8, the 1.4 from Zeiss, and now you've got the fourth 35mm focal length, which is another 1.4 in the form of a G Master. Well, that's a lot of choices within the Sony range, just the Sony range by itself. But that's not exactly a bad thing. There are at different price points. And of course, it looks like the 35mm f1.4 is going to be a beast of a lens in terms of image quality. And of course, the best that Sony has to offer. Now, I will be doing a full review on this lens coming shortly. And I will be doing a quick comparison with the Zeiss 35mm f1.4 coming shortly. So if you have any thoughts or if you're actually questioning what is exactly the difference between those two in terms of image quality be sure to subscribe to my channel and of course like this video if you found it helpful and of course check out the description down below for more information about this lens as well as affiliate links that do help support the channel also be sure to follow me on facebook and instagram for more sample photos and photo updates of this lens and until then happy shooting and thanks for watching